Hello everyone. Today on the Market Maker Show, we have Mr. Vishwas Patel, Joint Managing Director of Gujarat-based fintech Infibeam Avenues Limited. Infibeam is well known for its uh, digital payment solutions. Welcome, Vishwas. Thank you, Milan, and uh, thanks. Uh, glad to meet all your uh, viewers at Upstock. Uh, a very exciting platform. Glad to be on this one. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. And let me start the discussion with some basic questions. So could you please elaborate on Infibeam's business model? Okay, I think uh, Infibeam Avenues is India's first listed fintech. Uh, the whole uh, business model is about uh, uh, platforms, payments, and uh, finance. Uh, so this is the three broad themes within the company that we run. Uh, I'll start with the payments part. Payments something we started at the turn of the century, one of the first payment aggregators in the country by the brand name of CC Avenue. Way back in the year 99, 2000 is when we started. A uh, lot of firsts were credit in the payments business. Uh, the first to get credit cards in the country, the first to process rupee transactions, the first to get American Express, the first to do net banking transactions in the country, uh, the first CBDC transactions layer was done by on our platform. A lot of firsts. Uh, we were the first choice for uh, most of the merchants uh, uh, who started, who are today uh, unicorns. Uh, today, a crore plus merchants, uh, two lakh crore plus volumes. That is that, that what we process in uh, and on the payments part. Uh, we also present in multiple geographies. We are there in UAE. A uh, couple of thousand merchants there. Uh, some of the biggest names there. Uh, process around a billion uh, AD volume per month. There in that geography, we are there in Saudi, we are there in Oman. Uh, that's on the payments part, uh, platforms pass. We have multiple platforms uh, because platforms is like putting the card before the payment rails. So we have multiple platforms for you know uh, businesses to go online easily uh, without investing too much on technology and other fronts. So a next gen tech stack that we have for multiple verticals uh, is what we have. And then we have finance where uh, for the merchant uptake, when uh, we're doing, how do we increase their transactions? How do we help them with their capital requirements? So we have started with something called Express Settlement and others where we give zero-day settlements so that it helps them to beef up their daily business. So Milan, in short, this is what we are, a platform payments and finance company. Interesting. And uh, we've seen that in the fintech space, particularly your company targets, uh, you know, merchants and banks instead of direct uh, retail consumers. So what is the rationale behind this? So basically, if you are a fintech million uh, in India, right, uh, uh, if you are a fintech company, who are your target audience? The target audience today is, uh, is, is the SME, MSME corporates, that is the B2B side whom you give your payment services, platform services. The other side is all the banks whom you can give your tech stack and other things that is there to power their payments and other things. And the third is the consumers. So we focus on the SME, MSC, B2B and the banks. We don't go after the consumers because consumer payment gateways like uh, phone pay or a Paytm uh, uh, have uh, a lot of burn uh, to retain, to get those customers and then offer uh, a buy now, pay later, or cross sell other services where you become an insurance agent, you become a stock broker, and other things to do. So, consumer business requires thousands of crores of bun. So, hence, we don't uh, focus on consumers. We focus on the two other important part of the ecosystems that is the B2B merchants and, of course, the banks. So, that's the business model that we have, Milan. Got it. And, uh, you know, in general, over the last five years or so, have you seen, uh, you know, greater adoption from smaller businesses and companies compared to larger corporations, especially for the digital payments? Yes, it is. I think our numbers say it, that we have onboarded almost 900,000 new merchants uh, in the last two quarters. Right. That says a lot the kind of uh, because India is typically a nation of shopkeepers, right? SME is built around 110 million plus uh, as per the government uh, SMEs in the market. And, and the core of the business, even if you see the UPI volumes and other things, the way it has grown, right? Uh, the, uh, uh, the, whole, the whole premise is that uh, we need all stakes. Uh, it does not mean we don't focus on the big corporates and others. But SMEs, yes, uh, once they, it's a distributed uh, model where the more merchants that you have, more integration, it gives us long term stability and uh, other things to the company also. So yes, SME and MSME are are, are huge uh, 
uh, huge focus area for us uh, in India and uh, the multiple solutions over the years that we have launched to make it for the end merchants to go online, the small merchants, uh, including the latest launch of our tap based solution where even a Kirana uh, in a small village outside, say, in Manipur or Gohat or in uh, Assam, can just download just like on the Android app or just like download a YouTube, just like a YouTube app, download the CC Avenue app and start accepting credit card, debit card and net banking. You know, that kind of acceptance mechanism that we are building for SME, MSME is where the change is. So we are focused on SME and yes, uh, we look uh, a lot uh, to a lot of uh, future initiatives focus on the SME market, uh, Milan. Got it. So you are seeing that as a big driver for growth uh, in future? Yes, sure. Got it, got it. And we've seen, you know, from your presentation that you have a very diverse uh, client base. So, uh, you know, could you tell us what kind of solutions or services you provide to them? So, for example, we had seen, you know, uh, in your uh, client base, you have Taj, also Amul, as well as Indigo. Yeah, different kinds of solutions. As I said, uh, for small merchants, you require different kind of solutions for them to go online, right from just the payment link to easy acceptance mechanisms to uh, if they're going online to a ready shopping cart to many other things. So a vanilla payment gateway no longer rules, uh, rules the rules. Uh, you have to customize and build it. So for bigger enterprise clients also, when you go to them with just a, a plain vanilla gateway, like some of the newer guys are going, uh, they won't buy it. They need customized solutions which connects to a CA and SAP ERP. Or like you mentioned the case of Taj. Like for Taj, uh, we have de done deep integrations in the property management system, uh, something which is called Micros Fidelio, uh, which is based out of US, bought by Oracle uh, a couple of years back. So they won't be able to customize as per our uh, local lo uh, law enforcement of what RBI regulations tell them, be it on card tokenization to uh, the new SI mechanism, standing instruction mechanism. So to customize it for them, uh, we play the rules where we really customize a software where it speaks in real time without any manual intervention with their property management systems. Similar thing goes for airline business. We do more than a two dozen airlines that we power uh, in the region where we have to connect in real time to their, uh, to their core uh, GDS systems, the global distribution systems, uh, which are all based uh, internationally. So to do a real time with payments coming in and instant issuance of tickets, so we have to do deep integration into a, say a Navitair or Amadeus or the other systems that the airline uses. So you have to customize to this thing, even for smaller or medium hotels, right? And for smaller or medium hotels, uh, the the whole whole idea of uh, you know just giving a, a payment gateway does not work for them. So we build the entire res avenue platform stack, where uh, today uh, today uh, the entire central reservation system with with the uh, what do you call with the entire distribution. So if you are a small hotel and you have say 100 hotels or rooms to sell on 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 30th of December, you put up entire in a res avenue platform and from here entire white label booking engine for your own branded website. At the same time, the inventory is distributed in real time to all the OTAs around the world. So say a booking.com or a, a, a make my trip or Expedia or C trip. So in real time, the inventory goes. So if someone is looking for a say a hotel room in Mumbai and it picks the systems in real time, then it goes. So with this, you know, it's just not just the payment gateway. It's a whole, platform that you build so with for our it is like it makes it easier for the hotels to go online it gives us stickiness so a new payment gateway or vc funded payment gateway comes in and start discounting just to get market share right because whichever uh, things the vc touch the biggest loss maker is the category leader so to to bypass that uh, to uh, put our modes against our defined our castle we have to build these platforms where you know it gives uh, enhanced margins, it builds uh, stickiness uh, with those merchants. So hence, we have grown profitably all these years, Milan. Got it. And uh, as you said, you know, okay. in the recent September quarter, we've seen that the company has reported highest ever quarterly performance. So what are the reasons right. behind this uh, robust uh, show? I think multitude of reasons. I think overall, the economy is on upswing, right? So uh, upswing and 
post the pandemic, uh, most of those uh, are real merchants which are there in travel, uh, hospitality, uh, even entertainment, all are out, uh, full out. So the volumes are really, really, really increasing because the economy is on upscale. People are traveling, people are watching movies. You must have seen our other uh, other other uh, verticals also, like a book MISO reporting a profit of 86 crore after having a 450 crore loss in the previous year. Right. So a lot of people are traveling, all the hospitality, you see aggressive plans from all, all kind of hotel chains and everything. So it's growing. It's growing in a sense that uh, uh, ultimately beneficiary comes down to payments, which is the core, the last part of the leg. And that's why even our uh, uh, the payments business is also growing. Right. Even I think the UPI numbers are out. But if you see even the credit card processing numbers uh, today, at almost it has grown to almost uh, one and a half lakh crores a month of credit card processing volume. And uh, we process close to around 9 to 10% of the overall volumes in the country for credit cards. So that's where overall the business has been good. Uh, it has been growing economy of scale and, and all these factors have really helped over the last two quarters to, you know, uh, room not only a GMV volume, but even a profitability. Milan. True, true. And, uh, you know, India's digital ecosystem is growing rapidly. So where do you think right. are the opportunities lying going forward? Opportunity, uh, there is lots and lots of opportunity in many verticals. If you go to see to it, like uh, if you see uh, today, uh, we have the right government with the right mindset and deploying the right strategy to push digital payments, right? So uh, for digital payments, for what is it's ultimately commerce, right? Uh, what is commerce that any, any products sold or services sold and money paid? So wherever that money paid angle is there, we need to digitalize it. We need to opportunity. Uh, we need to make it easier and convenient and build those end-to-end -end mechanisms. So so many verticals that are there today, like say we have 18 lakh plus schools in in four major states, right? 18 lakh plus schools. Uh, our survey says that only 12,000 odd schools are accepting fees online. Right, the education fee is online. So the opportunity, say in education, in healthcare, you name so many verticals that are there that needs to be digitized. So uh, on a broad term today, uh, it's only 18% which digital payments today is. Right, so we still need to fight aggressively to may take grow it. So there's a lot of room ahead to grow. Uh, with the current only three or four players who are focusing on growing this bit right now on the digital payment side. So huge, huge opportunity on multiple verticals that are there. And uh, uh, we need to uh, be at it to go into tier two, tier three, go into multilingual, develop certain form factors where the cost is eliminated and many other things. So the opportunity going ahead is huge. Uh, and I believe that today, if only 46% of the world's real-time transactions happen in India, uh, that will grow to multi-multi-fold uh, what you see today. Because what is happening is that credit card is growing, debit card is growing, UPI is growing, net banking is growing. But on the other side, cash is also growing. So our fight is against cash and cash today is almost like 32 lakh crores uh, of cash that is in the market as per RBI stats. And that is also growing from 18 lakh crores what was there during the demand times. So that's also double. So a fight continues. I think this still uh, has a long way to go, the convenience factor and other things. So we see a huge opportunity going ahead. Milan. Okay. And in this optimistic scenario, what role does AI artificial intelligence play in the fintech space? And according to you, you know, how your company is, uh, you know, progressing on that front? Uh, you must have heard, we have already announced, uh, we are building a AI hub in the gift city uh, in Gandhinagar in Gujarat. Uh, the entire AI hub that is there, uh, we will be, uh, the AI hub that we have, the artificial intelligence, we are building a next gen technologies for payments where today uh, payments is where the user initiates it, right? Uh, something that can be automated and built while we are having a chat or talking and how if you say, okay, I'll pay you 100 rupees and AI can take over that and do the entire end-to-end -end payment with just a voice command, right? Many things are there. Like even if you're chatting and okay, you want to divide this bill into 10 of your friends, if you're splitting, so automatic it can split. So that is just on the transaction in uh, uh, what do you call orchestration side. But even on the transaction monitoring, on the transaction risk management that is there because fraud is becoming a concern on UPI. So kind of real-time things that an AI can do, like one particular card is used how many times across so many merchants, 
right? And what is the velocity that is used and whether it's going to the same dropship location and other things. So AI will have massively transformed the payment landscape. So we are already future investing into it and we see... Uh, we seem but the, what we will be making is more of a responsive AI rather than uh, anything else. So how can we make it more responsive because we are dealing with money and finance and, and what's the next gen technology where it can make transaction, it can grow the transactions, it can make it more safer uh, and, uh, and other things. So that's the whole idea of the AI hub that we have built. Uh, some of the new developments will be allow, announcing shortly in the coming quarters. Okay. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh... As per your presentation, uh, you know, you derive about 6% of total gross revenues from your platform business. And uh, we are right. seeing that there is uh, immense, uh, you know, adoption of cloud services. So do you see this uh, segment uh, being a growth driver going forward? Yes, uh, uh, I would say not only growth, but growth enabler for our payment business. So as I said, uh, we, are, we are also doing Bharat Bill Payment Systems. Today, around more than 11,000 crores of bills are generated through the Bill Avenue platform. So, you know, uh, 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 utility payment is a area where we want to focus on, right? So that platform, what the software that we have built, Build Avenue, uh, will generate a lot of traffic for other things that we want to do on the payment space. So different platforms, which are growth enablers for us, we'll be focusing on because bill payments is something you can forget your girlfriend's birthday, but you can't afford to forget to not pay your power bill of your home. Uh, because that will have repercussions, right? So these are the things that uh, uh, we are focusing on. Hospitality is one sector where, you know, in India does not have too many franchisee brands. Like unlike in the West, 90% of the hotel properties are in some franchisee brand, brand like a Best Western or a Choice or a, a JW or something. India, 95% of the hotels are on their own brand because India has a massive 450 million domestic tourism. Right. So they don't want to give eight or 10 percent of their top line to this brand just to have their brand. So India uh, overall, there's a huge opportunity in, in building those software and growing it. So multiple software, uh, we have keep focusing, as I said, it's, it's a growth enabler way of pushing more transactions into our payment gateway, where it makes it easier for merchants so that merchants don't have to bother of having programmers and webmasters running in their uh, what do you call reception area of a hotel or anything. So everything is taken care of by us in a cloud environment and everything. So that's the future. As we said, a, a, a platform with a payments is like a horse with a cart, right? And uh, it's traditionally been the model from early 2000s where you have seen eBay with a PayPal payments or uh, Amazon with Amazon payments or in Japan, Rakatun with Rakatun payments, Alibaba with Alipay and financial. So it goes together. So platforms and payments is a very good marriage to do. And then finance comes it to even grow all the things more larger. So that's the whole uh, business model of Infim Avenues Limited. Villa. Got it. And, uh, you know, while the avenues of uh, opportunities are immense, but you still operate in a highly regulated space. So uh, according to yes. you, what are the risks and, uh, you know, how do you plan to mitigate them? The risk, uh, risk to anyway, once you get regulated, then definitely for two or three bad apples, the whole ecosystem suffers, right? And that's where we are because we are often called the gold standards and payment gateway because we've been doing it from day one with a single, without a single penalty from the card associations or any reprimand from a legal, uh, from RBI. We hold all the licenses and RBI quota. We have been very uh, onboarding uh, all our merchants in a very safe, uh, doing all the possible kind of KYC and not just during uh, onboarding them, but even after the onboarding, monitoring the transactions to see any kind of harakiri, even the kind of monitoring on their website with backward link checks and other things. This has helped us in good stead with the regulators and other things. So, but what happens is that others, others mess up, so then the regulation increases. So we have to comply with more. Right. So that is one or two. Definitely the ecosystem is growing too fast. So many, many a times we find the ba bank score banking systems lacking to take on this kind of load and other things. So these are the small activities, but everybody is aware that this is what is required to be done to grow the ecosystem. So all, all parties involved are, are investing in the ecosystem to grow it to the next level. So, uh, thank you so much, Vishwas, uh, for taking out time for this discussion. And, uh, you know, it is pretty interesting how this entire uh, vertical, this entire fintech space is growing. And I'm sure, uh, you know, you are progressing well ahead of the market.
Thanks, Vilan. Uh, nice to have talked with uh, you and the Upstock users. Uh, hope they like what we said. Thank you. Thank you so much. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.